What's up everyone, Graz back with another video and today we're going to look at the evolution of the PlayStation remotes. So the reason why I only have three remotes that are out, notably the PS3 remote, the PS4 and obviously the PS5. I find that the PS3 remote was actually just more of a, I would say of evolution from the PS1 and the PS2 controller versus it being a revolution. So I don't think it's worthwhile to look at the PS1 and PS2 controllers just because there weren't like huge changes even when it came to the PS3 controller. So for today's video, we're gonna look at the differences between the PS3, the 4, and the 5. So the first thing you're gonna notice off the bat is in terms of size and shape, the PS3 controller is actually the smallest of the bunch. So it is uh, the smaller of the bunch and, uh, and in terms of even when you hold it in your hands, you could actually feel that it's missing a little bit at the bottom here. There's a decent amount of gap uh, at the bottom of the palm uh, that would have allowed for a lot of better grip. And the other thing as well is the joysticks, the actual joysticks, you guys can notice from the PS4 to the PS5 that this one here doesn't have that indentation. So it's actually uh, curves outwards versus curving inwards, which is something that they changed on the uh, PS4 controller and the PS5 as well. Uh, apart from that, the PS3 uh, controller, this is the first time that uh, they had introduced what they call the six axes, uh, and they called it the DualShock 3. So it was the six axis uh, controller, and what was nice about it is it had included uh, what they call a, a gyroscope and an accelerometer, so it can actually track in space where the uh, controller was uh, situated. The other difference, if we turn around here, and actually I'll, after that I'll, I'll compare all three together, is this one was porting that standard uh, USB, uh, I would say micro USB for, uh, for connection which was then changed, uh, if you take a look actually to the PS4 controller, uh, they made it a little bit smaller. When again, when we look at the PS5, they all switched over to Type-C. So right now on the PS5, it is a Type-C uh, connector. But in terms of the face itself, um, I mean the biggest difference is obviously you can look in the shape. So out of all of them, the PS5 controller is actually the biggest one. So uh, it's the biggest and obviously the heaviest, being that the PS5 does have haptic feedbacks as well as adaptive triggers. The PS5 controller does have, uh, is sporting a 1,500 milliamp hour uh, battery, which was an upgrade from the PS4 controller, which was just a 1,000 uh, milliamp uh, battery. So apart from that, I mean, the analog, the uh, actually the D-pad, uh, they are a little bit smaller on the uh, PS3. Uh, you do still have your PS button in the middle, which is very similar to the one on the PS4. On the PS5, they did change the shape and the look of it. Uh, and apart from that, and I'll show you guys actually on the back side, the other big difference, like looking quickly on the face itself, is that uh, the PS4 and the PS5 are sporting a, uh, a touchpad, which was introduced obviously on the PS4 generation. The PS3 does not have that touchpad. Um, some people, you know, found that it was maybe underutilized uh, by developers on the PS4 generation. So let's see uh, if maybe this current generation, the developers are gonna use it a little bit more extensively. If we look at the backside, so I'll just stack these all together, take a look at the shape, a little bit of the curvature as well. So I got pretty much all the controllers side by side. Uh, you guys can see obviously the different types of connections, the different type of micro uh, USB to charge, and then you guys can also notice as well the type C obviously from the PS5. You can also notice the triggers. So big difference from the PS, well, I would say the PS3 era, the triggers are tiny, and you can see on the PS4, they got bigger, and then on the PS5, they got even bigger. So not only are the triggers on the PS5 a lot bigger, they are also sporting what's called the adaptive triggers, right? So uh, what's nice about adaptive triggers is that developers can now uh, create some type of tension 
and a rumble effect on those triggers depending on the type of game. So for example, if you are playing a first person shooter and you're shooting with a specific gun, developers can now use those adaptive triggers to give you more of an immersive feel depending on what, uh, what that is. So this is on the back side. The other thing you're going to notice right off the bat as well is the PS4 is the only one who has that huge light bar. So again, that huge light bar which was frowned upon on the PS4 era because it was known to one, drain the battery, two, create a little bit of a distraction. And the other thing as well is that it wasn't really utilized in many games. Uh, so it wasn't really utilized in many games. Um, I think the best use of the PS4 controller was actually for PSVR, for virtual reality, where they're using the light bar to track it in space with the, the PlayStation camera. So that's the back end, guys. So really interesting to see the, the evolution of the triggers, uh, how they've just got bigger and bigger with time. And you guys can also see the shape of, uh, of the system. So that's on the front end. Maybe what we can do now is take a look at the bottom side. So nothing, I mean, nothing too, too major. The biggest thing as well is obviously the, uh, uh, the PS3 doesn't really have anything from the bottom, which means it didn't have a headphone jack. So the headphone jack got introduced on the PS4 era. Uh, it did not exist on the PlayStation 3. So that's where they introduced the, the uh, headphone jack. And it's still sporting the same type of uh, 3.5 millimeter jack on the PS5. The biggest difference is uh, on this one here is that now there's a microphone. So if I re put these joysticks back down, let me just lay them out so you guys can see them. So the PS5 now actually has a microphone. So there's this little button at the bottom which lets you mute and unmute uh, the, uh, the, actual, uh, the actual microphone. The other thing you're gonna notice is the PS4 and PS5 do sport a built-in microphone, which the PS3 did not. So I would say that jumping from the PS3 to the PS4 generation, that was more of a uh, revolution. That was more of a revolution. And I would even say sporting to the PS5 due to the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers, that was also a major revolution in the way the games feel and play. So Sony uh, has done a really good job, I find, uh, you know, trying to keep things fresh when it comes to the controllers. Uh, they're really, really great. One thing as well I forgot to mention is actually the share and uh, button, right? So the share button started to come out on the PS4, which obviously we did keep it on the PS5. But then again, something that did not uh, exist on the PS3. Of course, that's due to hardware limitations and power. Although the PS3 was sporting what was considered at the time. Uh, one of the most powerful CPUs and GPUs, uh, the infamous IBM cell processor, which didn't do very well for the simple reason that it was very hard to develop on, right? It was very, very hard to develop on. Um, so that generation didn't do as well versus the PS4, which then changed off to the x86 architecture uh, due to Mark Cerny. Uh, so, you know, really taking Sony into a different, uh, different direction. So that's pretty much it guys for, uh, the remote comparison. When you really look at the PS3, you start to realize, obviously it is dated hardware, but how much we've evolved, uh, on the controller side. And, you know, what I'm really interested to know is what does, what lies in the future? I mean, the Sony PlayStation 5 has everything. You have a built-in mic, you got a share button, you have your touch screen, you got your adaptive triggers, you have your Type-C connection, you have your haptic feedback. So uh, I'm really interested to see what is Sony gonna do next? Uh, do you guys think that Sony's gonna keep the DualSense 5 for another gaming uh, uh, generation just because of how good it is and how amazing it feels? So that's it guys for today. Like, subscribe, it really helps the channel. Leave some comments. And as always, thank you for watching. Have yourself a great day. Have yourself a great night. 
and stay safe out there. Peace.